His name is worthy to be praised. Amen. We just worship the name of Jesus today as we, amen, celebrate this youth ministry today. Amen. We want to thank God for his grace and his mercies. We want to thank God for his keeping care to us today. Surely we could be otherwise minded, but because the grace of God is just wrong. God Almighty is still strong within us. We just want the Lord, amen, to be with us. We are asking to shout at Jesus today. Amen. We thank God for these young people. Praise God who are still here. Amen. Anchored it only the bosom of Abraham. And those still have a willing mind to continue to serve God. And as I say today, today is our youth Sunday. Amen. And we have a youth minister in the house. Amen. Who have God have picked and put together. Amen. For such a time as this. And at this time, we don't know further ado. I will decrease. Amen. And let this man of God increase. I introduce to some and present to others. No other but Minister Shevan Thomas. Minister Shevan Thomas to the congregation. Care of God and the Holy Ghost. Amen. 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 Bless you, Bishop. Bless you, Bishop. Come on. Let's praise God from where you are right now. I want you to open up your mouth and give God a loud shout of praise. I want you to open up your mouth and Shabbat God from where you are. I don't know where you are right now, but I believe that you are in the presence of Jehovah. And when we are in the presence of Jehovah, there is fullness of joy. Come on, open up your mouth and give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. God, we thank you for today. God, we're asking that you decrease my flesh and increase your Holy Spirit on today. God, as I give your children a word, oh, Father God, from the heaven, oh, Father God, from the throne room of grace. God, I thank you. God, I praise you. And God, you are worthy to be praised. It's in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit that I pray. Amen, amen, and amen. I come to you today, say good morning, good afternoon, good morning, good, and good afternoon. Um, I want to bring greetings to the shepherd of this house, Bishop Neville Copeland Sr., and, and first, and Lady Minister Angela Copeland. Um, bless them, bless them, clap them, clap them, clap them, hallelujah, hallelujah. I want to give honor to my wife, um, honor to my wife. I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her, amen, amen, amen. Um, Sister Bethany Thomas, I want to bless God for her as well. Um, and today, I won't be before you long. I promise you I won't be before you long. But on today, I have an interesting topic. And as we're talking about identity and as we're talking about trust, uh, I want to talk from the subject of ready, set, and go. I want to talk from the subject today on ready, set, and go. And if you want to replace those three words, I want to say seek, stay loyal, and build. I'm going to say it again. Seek, stay loyal, and build. Ready, set, go. In this time of corona, it is important that we understand that we must continue to seek the face of God. It is important that we are ready to go forth and do his will. That we shall go forth into the world and make fishers of men. That we go forth into the world and make disciples, make followers of Christ. That we go forth and we spread the good news. I'm talking about ready, get set, and go. I'm talking about going forth and healing the sick and raising the dead by his spirit. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead is the same spirit that lives in you and in me. Hallelujah. But you can't go if you're not ready and you're not set. See, when it comes to the race that we are in, we have to be ready for when the official says go. We have to be set before he says go. You want to know why? Because when he says get ready, we can still be moving. But when he says set, we got to be still. When he says set, we cannot move. Because if we move before his timing, then we get penalized. If we move before his timing, then we get disqualified. So in the spiritual race, we got to be ready. In the spiritual race, we got to be set. For when God says do not move, but be still still and know that I am God until the official from heaven, God himself says go, we are not to move. That's why it says be ready, get ready, get set. But he didn't say go yet, but he says get set. And then when it's time to go, God will say go. The Bible says that 
if we, we need to be patient. We need to be patient in this race. God even says that we know that love is patient. So when we're showing a form of patience, we're still showing a form of love. And if we're not leaning on his own understanding, then we are not going to be able to finish this race well. If we're not leaning on his own understanding, then we don't have the wisdom that God allows us to have. Like Proverbs 3 verse 5 says, Oh, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not on your own understanding. But the next verse says, In all thy ways acknowledge him and what? He shall direct your path. He shall make your path straight. Ready, set, and go. We have to be still and know that he is God. We must understand that he is the good shepherd and we are his sheep. We must understand that we have to follow him to get everything that we need in him. We must not worry about tomorrow, but about what tomorrow may bring because we know that God is a provider. And if he said it, he's going to do it in order to go, we have to know how to follow. In order to lead, we have to know how to follow. God is in control. He is the commander. He is the pilot. He is in control of everything in our lives. Why won't you let him follow? Why won't you let him, excuse me, why won't you let God lead and you follow? As God leads, you follow. In this life, there's a lot of us that we want to lead so much, but we don't know how to follow. A lot of us want to be shepherds, but we don't know how to be sheep. You need to honor the man above. You need to honor, respect, and obey the man in charge named Jesus Christ. And as I said, it says ready, set, go. We replace those three words and we say seek, stay loyal, and build. When it comes to seeking the face of God, you heard our own sister Chantel read it earlier. Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added and will be added unto you. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Hallelujah. In Psalms 105 verse 4, the Bible says, seek the Lord and his strength. Seek him even more. Seek his face even more. So that means that seeking him for the good things is not good enough. Seeking him for the presence and the blessings is not good enough. We need to seek his face more. We need to have a relationship with Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jeremiah 29, verse 13, the Bible says, And ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all of your heart. The Bible says that we must seek God with our whole heart. Well, we must seek God with our whole mind. We must seek God with all of our body and our soul. What is the greatest commandment? The Bible says that we must love the Lord our God with all of our mind, all our soul, all, the, all our heart, all our body, all even the strength that he gives us. So that means in everything that we do and ever how we think, we must love God. That is a part of seeking God. You are not seeking God until you love God. And until you love God, you can't love nobody else. Seeking. Stay loyal. And build. So where we are touched on seeking, I'm almost done. Give me five more minutes and I'm done. Now we talk about staying loyal to what is loyalty? When we think of loyalty, what does that mean? I'm pretty sure a little boyfriend and girlfriend is running around and all in your husbands or wives and any person that has a friendship or relationship, whether it's with their boss or whatever it is, the coworker, you have a friendship with your coworker or whatever it is, that type of relationship that you have, you want to be loyal to that person. What does that mean? You want to be obedient to that person. You want to respect that person. You want to honor that person. You want to be faithful to that person. How many of us can say that we're being faithful to Jesus today? How many of us can say that we are being faithful to the one God most high? The God on high. The God that sits on the throne by himself. The God that can do anything by himself. But I know that I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me because it's his strength. How many people we know that when we have his strength, when we stay loyal to Jesus, that anything is possible? 
When we're talking about loyalty, I'm talking about who do you serve? When I talk about loyalty, which masters are you serving? Because my Bible says uh, in Matthew 6, verse 24, no man can serve two masters at the what? At the, at the who? At the who? At the same time. No man shall serve. No man can serve two masters at the same time. It's either you serve one and you hate the other or you, you can't serve two because whatever one you're loyal to, your loyalty is only to one person. And I can tell you today that my loyalty and your loyalty should reside in Jesus Christ. We know that he's the one person that will never turn his back on us. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 31, if God be for us, who, who, who can be uh, against us? Uh, the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians uh, 3 verse 3, but the Lord is faithful. Who shall establish you and keep you from evil? So that means that whoever you stay loyal to, uh, loyal to, he, that person's going to help you through your coming, you're going through. I'm telling you today, if you stay loyal to Jesus, he will take you through and bring you out. Whatever the wall that you came to, he's either going to bring you around or he's going to bring you through it. It may look like a dead end, but it's just the beginning. It may look like a dead end, but you may be down, but you're not counted out. It may look like the dead end, but God is not through with me or you yet. Loyalty, seeking. Loyalty in the last one, build. We need to build our houses on the rock. We need to build our houses on the rock, on the foundation of God's word, on the foundation of what God represents, on the foundation of who God is. That's what we need to build our house on because we are so focused on trying to build houses, but we don't have the right foundation. So what happens is when we build the houses and they get tall and tall and we want the couch and we want the doors and we want the attic, but at the end of the day, a storm comes by and the whole house comes down. A storm comes by and your house can't stand alone on itself. All of us, we need Jesus to lift us up and stand on this foundation. Our house is going to sink if it's not on the foundation of Jesus Christ. And watch this. You can't build a house if you don't know the plan. You can't build a house if you don't have tools. I'm talking about ready, set, go. I'm talking about seek, Loyalty and build. You can't build if you don't know who Jesus is because your building has to be based on who Christ is. Your building has to be based on who Christ is, what he can do. So I'm telling you today as I close that we need to seek the face of God, that we need to stay faithful. And then when we do that, we will be ready to go. The Bible says in Matthew 28, verse 19 and 20, go, go, ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever, 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 I, I, I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. And God finished it by saying amen. God finished it by saying it is so. God finished it by saying I know the ending from the beginning, and I will get the last say so. God finished it by saying I am the I am. God finished it by saying, I am in charge. God finished it and saying, I am in control. So I come to tell you today, whatever you're going through, seek, stay loyal, and build. In this time of corona, seek, stay loyal, and build. Why? Get ready, stay set, and go. Wait for Jesus to tell you to go. Wait for yourself to be set. Wait for yourself to be ready because you can't go. You can't run if you're not ready. You can't go and tell somebody the good news if your heart is not right with your brother or sister, if your heart is not right with Christ, if your spirit is not right. Come up from among them. Be ye separated. Come from among them. Be ye separated. God is calling the Joshua generation. God is calling you to come back to the place of seek, staying loyal, and building his kingdom. So God, we come to you right now. And God, every single person that's watching, 
this live right now or we're watching the, 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 the re-recording back on when the playbacks, when they look at this live video. God, I'm asking that you touch every single person, young and old, sick and not sick, death, not death, crippled, not crippled, in the island of Jamaica, in the island of Trinidad, in the island of the Bahamas, in the island, in, in the country of Africa, in the country of Argentina, in the country, in the continent of Europe, oh God, in the country of London, oh Father God, in all these different types of places, in England, oh Father God, in Germany, oh God, in the Philippines, in America, in Canada, in Mexico, oh God, the Cayman Islands, oh God, wherever people are watching this live from, touch them, oh God, heal them, oh God, deliver them, from all their fears. God, we know that we're going through a time right now. Oh God, we know that there's fear over almost every nation. Oh Father God, in this world. Oh Father God, we know that the devil is trying to place fear on your church. But God, we believe that we don't need a building to have church because God, we are the church. God, we know that wherever we go and we pray, there is an altar laid so that even sickness people, oh Father God, people that are sick, people that don't know you can come to know you, God, because we have set the place for us to dwell in your presence. God, every single person that's watching this live right now, Father God, I'm asking that you touch them. Oh, Father God, heal their bodies, especially the ones with corona, especially the ones with diabetes, especially the ones with HIV, especially the ones with AIDS, especially the ones with cancer. God, we believe that your presence is changeable. God, we believe that we don't need to lay hands in order to see someone and heal. In the name of Jesus, we speak a thing and it shall be a thing. In the name of the Father, we declare. Come on, where you are right now, declare with me. In the name of the Father, in the name of of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Come on, declare with me one more time. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, we bless you now, God. And even, even all those people who are not saved and that won't come to know you, Father God, allow them to call the number on the bottom of the screen as I pray now. Allow them to be convicted to come to you. Allow them to confess their sins and confess that you are Lord Jesus Christ and that, God, you are the realest God. You are the only true and living God, that God, you are all powerful, all knowing, oh God, and we must believe in you, God, that you died on the cross for their sins, oh Father God, that you went, you were dead, and, and you were raised in three days, and God, we thank you, and God, we thank you for them, and every single person that's watching this, the members, the non-members, the visitors, oh Father God, even the enemies, ah, uh, yes Lord, even the enemies uh, that are watching this, Father God, oh God, we're asking that you even touch them, bless those people, Father God, bless your people, in Jesus' name, that I pray, amen, amen, and amen.